Greetings and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Vodcast podcast. Who loves you? All you Billy Bumblers out there, how are you doing this Tuesday morning, this fine fucking Tuesday morning? I am doing pretty good with myself. Much better than I was doing last night. I need to tell you something. I have to confess something and I need to speak with you about something I very, very rarely speak with anyone about. It's very personal and private. It happens in the bathroom. That's right. I had a plan this morning. You know what my plan was this morning? I was going to come on here and eat the rest of this. This wasn't too bad going down. However, my stomach was a wreck last night. I had some serious tummy troubles. I was in so much pain in my gut, in the bathroom. I I don't want to get into details because I don't like talking about that subject. But I'm skirting around it today just for you guys because it's, it was rough. It was very rough. But the white chocolate in this was very delicious. Now, people people like to say that white chocolate doesn't exist. It's not chocolate. The funny thing is that a good portion of the day went by. You know, I, I ate another meal, um, had a few drinks last night. Bet you can't guess what they were. Um, and it wasn't until like just before or during supper time, like right around that time, I started feeling weird, like my stomach was like starting to ache. And I would have thought that that whole process would have been over by then. I mean, maybe not the, the, the final results. But up to that point, I assumed that my pain level, you know, had leveled out and it was gone. It's not coming back. And then it must have just taken a while to get to my stomach or, or whatever it does when it's in there, breaking down or the, the cast, what are they, the ca- uh, Caspian? No, oh, that's a tattoo place. Um, anywho. They must have started attacking my belly from the inside, trying to tear their motherfucking way out. They made it. They win. (laughs) They win this round. But needless to say, I will not be finishing the rest of this on this morning's vodcast podcast. Thank you again, Rick. It's unfortunate that things like this have to be so spicy. I mean, I guess that's the whole point of it, but I was really enjoying the white chocolate and I was really looking forward to finishing it and like proving myself to you guys and proving to the world, the YouTube world, that I could do it. Then I could do it, but I do not want to put myself through that. However, Saturday night is rolling around and me and my friend Jess are going to be eating the uh, little nitro and I'm super nervous about that. I've watched the videos of people eating it again and again and some of them handle it really well. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to handle it well as well, because I don't want to go through what I went through last night. It was, it wasn't even the act. It was the pain, the pain in my stomach that just was overwhelming. I'm going to shut about the pain in my stomach and what happens in my bathroom after I eat hot food, because you don't want to hear it. And I certainly don't want to talk about it. When I was a kid, Bradley's and Stop and Shop at the old Taunton Mall were my stomping grounds. Uh, my mother didn't drive. She was legally blind, so she couldn't get a license. Though it would have been very interesting to see what would have happened if she did get her license. So we had to rely on my uncle a lot for, uh, for rides, places. Um, my grandmother didn't drive. My grandfather on my mother's side ran out on my grandmother for a while, came back. She took them, but that's not about my family's issues. It's about Bradley's and Stop and Shop in the old mall. My mother and I would go there to get everything, whether it be school clothes or or groceries. Um, the mall was always a fun and exciting place for me. Even when I didn't go with my mother and I got a little bit older and I could ride my bike there with my friends and we would go to the arcade or the joke shop. Now, this mall had a few stores that like... When it was in its prime, this mall was awesome. Like, for a kid, until you saw your first, like, two-story real mall that had, you know, 100, 200 stores in it, this one-level mall with maybe 20 stores in it, convenience store, jewelry store, 
Uh, there was a Chinese place for a long time, but before that, it was a Bliss, I believe, or Brigham's, one of the two. Um, and we'd ride over there on our bikes, and uh, the joke shop was always the go-to because it had the coolest stuff. It had stuff that you weren't supposed to have when you were a kid, things like smoke bombs, um, I don't know if they had firecrackers, but I know they had the smoke bombs and we would buy shitloads of those and have such a blast, like going out behind them all and just lighting them up and watching the smoke come. Man, those days are long behind me. I mean, that's, we're talking, I was probably about 10, 11, right around that age. Now I'm 46. So you're, you're talking 34, 35 years. It's so funny to think that that, that mall still stands whereas the new mall in Taunton, the Silver City Galleria Mall that I grew up kind of in my teen years hanging out at and uh, going with my friends to just cause havoc in the, you know, the, the uh, annals, annals of the mall. Uh, but the, the old mall, Stop and Shop, when I see it in my head, I don't know how old you guys are that are listening to this, but if you look up like 70s and 80s grocery stores, particularly Stop and Shop, um, things have changed so much since I was a kid and I would go grocery shopping with my mother or my grandmother or, or whoever it was. Um, and, and, and at the time, I didn't appreciate things because I, I think they didn't need to be appreciated at the time. It's the nostalgia of it, the nostalgia of it that really brings you back and brings back the memories. I remember, um, I think I've told you this before, I was with my grandmother and we were getting the, the candy that you filled in the bag at Stop and Shop. And I just kept swinging it around and she kept telling me not to do it. And I got goddamn bag broke and candy went everywhere. Um... But she didn't get mad at me. She was a good grandmother. Really good grandmother. Mary Green wrote a song about her. Here's the, uh, here's the card if you want to listen to it. I, it's a terrible performance, but you get the idea. Uh, so the joke shop, yeah, they had masks. They had uh, sex toys and stuff, <laughs> which I didn't realize when I was a kid what that store was really for. Like the whole front was my store, like Smurfs. Here's a, here's a good story for you. When I went to school, it was right after my dad died. I hated school. I hated it. And something in me after my dad died clearly changed and I became much more of an introvert. And I, um, I didn't handle being spoken to by an adult very well, like in, in, in a, in a, uh, what am I trying to say? In a, in a, in a role of, I, I, I can't find the words. When an adult talks to you, when um, a teacher talks to you, I, I can't think of the term. Fuck my brain. Fuck my brain. Fuck my brain is broken. Anywho, teachers talk to you in this tone sometimes, and, and I did not deal with it well. Mrs. Dooley in second grade. I don't know. Maybe I just became a lot more sensitive after I, my dad died or something. But I remember my mother would bring me at the end of the week. What the fuck is that noise? Oh, it's the cat in the litter box. My my mom would bring me once a week, and I'd get to pick out two Smurfs or one one Smurf set or something like that. Um, and that was my favorite part of the week. And, and as long as I got through the week of school and didn't complain, which seems kind of shitty in hindsight now. It's like, here, take these toys and stop complaining. It seems like the worst way to raise a child. Like, I'll give you stuff if you stop being a pain in my ass. Um, I guess that's some of the things you overlook when you're a kid. Now, let's get motherfucking racist for just a second here. Because my ancestry and Carol's ancestry DNA kits have been received by Ancestry.com or, or whatever the company is. And they're now going through the process. And I am fucking, li I'm so, not living, I'm so excited about getting the results back. I want to see if CRI genetics just kind of, I mean, I know they have to be honest because like you can't run a company of that magnitude and lie to everyone. And then when there's a way to go to other companies to get the same information to find out if it's real or not. My point is I'm still questioning my Italian ship. <laughs> I, I know, I know I am. I know that my Italian ancestors moved to Portugal and I, you know, my descendants after that were considered Portuguese. I get it. It's just still 
weirding me out, man. And I think it would weird anybody out. If, the, if you grew up and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm 100% Irish. And then you find out that you're like 60% German or something. You know, I, I, I'm not going to get on my high horse about this this morning. I'm just saying that I think I have a right to, to, to question and I can't wait to see the results to see if they're similar, identical, or completely different. And that is going to be a fun motherfucking video to make. But that's the end of this video because I got stuff to do today. So thank you guys for stopping by and checking this out. If you guys love and watching these, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and hit the little bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and take care of each other out there. I'm Jason Oliveira, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode of the Vodcast Podcast. Take care. Boy, howdy. <laughs>